In this video, I want to show you a really cool area of magic school that maybe you haven't tried out. I know a lot of teachers have now discovered um, all of the amazing tools or even some of the amazing tools that magic school AI offers. Um, but, but I don't think a lot of people have tried this launch to students option that um, was um, rolled out this past spring. So I wanna take a look at this launch to students and show you what a student room can look like. Um, these are some that I've played around with, one featured in our recent newsletter, but I'm going to start from scratch and do launch new room up in the right-hand corner. When I do that, I'm going to name this room. Um, it does ask you to choose a grade level. Um, you know, you can just choose one of the grade levels that you teach. Um, max number of students that can join the room um, defaults to 250, which is more than anybody would need at the high school or middle school levels. Um, then I hit the next button, and this is where, to use a word in the name of the website, this is where the magic happens. I have all of these different tools that I can make available to my students. Um, important to note, just because I launch a room and let my students in here, it doesn't mean that they can access everything. You get to choose and customize what your students have access to. Um, so perhaps I am having my students um, work on a research project. So I'm going to add research assistant because I think this is a great tool for my students. I'm going to give them writing feedback. Um, it's powerful that you know, having somebody else read your work and give you feedback on it is a really powerful um, partnership to have, but not everybody has that. Um, so maybe I make this an AI writing feedback partner. Um, I can keep going down through here, um, you know, rewrite it. Maybe I don't want it to rewrite anything. So I'm going to skip that. Um, I'm going to keep going down here. Um, Maybe those are the only two. Oh, wait, text proofreader. This could be really good. I My students have finished their writing. Um, they had that assistant, but now let's have it proofread, correcting grammar, spelling, punctuation, and things like that. Um, so I have added that. Those kind of look like the things that um, I want my students to have access to. I can review those up here at the top. So I see tools to launch, research assistant, text proofreader, writing feedback. Perfect. That's what I want for my students for this room that we're going to use in class together. I hit next. Um, it lets me preview. This is what my students will see, and I'm going to launch the room. When I do that, I will have two ways to share it with my students. I can get a URL code that can be posted, for example, in Schoology for my students. Um, I can also get a QR code. Um, this is really great for our middle school students who have iPads. Um, they can just click that QR code and it will launch them right into the student room. Um, so next I'm gonna show you what this looks like from the student side. Um, do a little magic there and then transition back to show you what this dashboard looks like on the teacher side once your students have started working. So this is what it's going to look like for your students. I dropped the code in here that my teacher provided for me in Schoology. Um, I type my name in. I would definitely recommend having your students use first and last names. So you can very clearly see um, who each response is coming from. Um, because on the teacher side, after I do this, I will show you what this looks like. And then I just hit join room. When I do that, um, it does always give this little like using magic to the school responsibly and really just some AI use responsible, responsibly kind of things here. Um, so I recommend having your students read through that um, and they hit I acknowledge and then they have access to the three tools um, that I turned on for them. There is nothing else here for them. It is just what I wanted my students to have access to. Um, so I didn't prepare a writing response to drop in here. 
But if I have writing feedback, um, I can describe my assignment, um, research paper on the causes of the civil. Um, what I want feedback on, I can attach a rubric if my teacher has given me a rubric. So it can like look at my rubric and see um, what is my teacher looking for? Does it feel like I have hit those points? Um, I can give it additional focus for the feedback. Um, and then I can insert my writing here. So I can um, copy and paste my writing here. Um, the Civil War was caused by um, aliens invading from outer space. Okay, um, so it's obviously incorrect, but let's just see what it does with that. Uh, so it's gonna give me some feedback. Um, so, it, but I just did this so that I can show you, um, it uh, is apologizing. It cannot give, provide meaningful feedback on the given sample. Um, the single sentence doesn't meet the criteria for a research paper. Um, uh, it appears to be a non-serious response. Uh, so this is the kind of thing that a student might see if they do something like that. Um, but this was just so I can show you on the teacher side what it looks like. Um, so I'm going to hop back over to the teacher side show you what you will see then as all of your students are working in the classroom that you have launched. Okay, I wanted to show you one more um, side of the, the student side that I thought was powerful because I wanted to have a second student in your dashboard before I transition back there. Um, so I was going to throw this in and thought, you know what, um, let's show them. So I went into research assistant this time um, and I asked it what were some causes of the Civil War? So it's given me kind of some bullet points, um, some like key things that were causes of the Civil, civil War. Um, and you'll notice that it has cited its sources. Um, so I can see next to each of these um, a number. And at the bottom, it gives me where this comes from. Um, and so then student could copy this and go, oh, I want to know more about this. This is um, a video and detailed article on causes of the Civil War, um, focusing on the economics of slavery and political control. I want to know more. Um, and then this can launch them into another search. Um, because let's face it, Google searches are just so broad these days because there's just so much information out there um, that this can be a really nice starting point for some research. It is citing its sources. It's not just throwing random facts out there. It is looking and citing sources because this is for classroom use. Um, one other thing on the student side before I show you the teacher side is your output history. So a teacher or a student can come in here and I can see this is what I looked at. Um, this is what it gave me and I can continue that thread or I can go back to my magic tools and start another one. Um, but now let's take a look at that teacher side. While your students are using the magic school room that you created and launched for them, um, you can come back to this launch to students anytime, see the room, you can see how many students are in there. Um, and then if you click on this room, it opens it up and you'll have your dashboard. So I can see um, all of my students would be populating here. Um, I can see the last tool that they used. I can see if they are active or not. Um, and I can click on their initial generation and I can see everything. So this is like super powerful to tell your students that um, whatever they are generating within Magic School AI, you have eyes on these things. Um, they cannot delete their thread. You can. Um, they cannot. And I can see everything that they have come up with, um, all of their research. I can see that. Kathy, um, when she did this, she said the Civil War was caused by aliens invading from outer space and the response that Magic School gave her. Um, so everything shows up here. If you see a student um, doing something that you, you know, maybe you need to just chill them out, you can pause them, you can lock them. 
Um, if Magic School um, sees things inappropriate going on, it will flag a student as well. So nothing is flagged here, even though Kathy wasn't taking this seriously, nothing is flagged. Um, and then just another thing to show you up here on your dashboard, you can get that join info again. So that original thing that popped up with the URL and the QR code. Um, I can also pause this room or lock the room for all students. So maybe I just need to get all of my students' attention back for a moment. Um, I can pause them or lock them. Um, ultimately, I would say pause is for short term. Lock is if you just don't want them to access the room again until maybe the next time that they're in class. Like this is just a tool we're going to use in class. Um, and then on the right over here, I can get the student join info um, and I can also remove a student from the room. Um, it's just such a great tool. Uh, I do recommend like looking over it, launch a practice room so you can see all of those tools that are available to you um, and consider sharing this with your students and working it into a lesson for some very responsible use of AI in the classroom. Have a great day.